Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week we're talking about why it's okay to ask the saints to pray for us. We are all one body of Christ. As we are connected to the living here on earth and those who, are been, who have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are assimilated into Christ's body. So we are connected to each other as much as we are connected to the Godhead, who is Jesus, who is the head of our body. The saints in heaven are also connected to Jesus, as well as connected to us, just as much as I can ask one of my close friends, or even someone I don't know, to pray for me, because I've been praying for weeks about the same thing and haven't had any results, I can ask someone else to pray for me, perhaps somebody that's a little more righteous, perhaps somebody who's walking with God maybe more than I am and I'm unaware of it. Two prayers for one thing is always better than one. That's why we go to Mass, that's why we go to church, and we all pray for the same things during Mass and during service. Think of the saints like our brothers and sisters. Since we are all one family of God and all children of God, then we all love one another. Just as the saints in heaven love us. If the saints in heaven are our brothers and sisters, just as our family of our brothers and sisters here on earth, wouldn't we put pictures up of the ones that we love, like our brothers and sisters? I wouldn't walk in your house right now and tell you that the pictures that you have of your brothers and sisters who are up in your house, that you should take them down because that's sinful and that's wrong. No, we put pictures up of our family. We put pictures up of the people that we love. And if I had a statue of somebody, I would put that up too. Asking the saints for their prayers is not idol worship because we are not worshiping them. And we are not worshiping the statue. In fact, we're asking them at their grave to pray for us. When you go to a shrine of, the, of a saint, they will, that, there typically will be a, a relic there, typically a piece of their body, a bone, hair, or some type of their body that has been encased in glass or, or some type of marble. Because just as you would go to your grandmother's grave and you would see her maybe once a year, maybe on her birthday, maybe on the day she died, and you go there and you talk to her and you say, hey, grandma, how are you? How are you doing? I know you're in heaven with, with Jesus, so if you're right next to him, could you please pray for him that, that I get good grades on my test or whatever you may say to her. It's the same thing with the saints. Hi, Blessed Virgin Mary, how are you? Can you please pray for me? Because I know you're right there with Jesus and I know that he loves you so much. It's the same thing. We are told to pray for one another. And the saints in heaven aren't dead. They're alive, living in eternal life. To disconnect ourselves from the family of God would be wrong and a sin in itself. That's why we include them in our spiritual life, just as Christ included them before they died. They lived and died in the name of Jesus, and they have miracles revolving around their death for people being cured from incurable diseases. That's how the Catholic Church decides someone becomes a saint. Only person that could make these miracles happen is God himself. Think of Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci. When they, when they painted their great masterpieces, did people go over and worship and bow down to their, to their artwork and say, oh my gosh. You are so perfect and beautiful. No, they, they praised the artist. The artist that painted that painting. It's the same thing with the saints. The saints are God's greatest work. And there are still saints today. There are still people out there trying to become saints, wanting to become saints, desiring to become saints. And we are all told that we should pray for them in the Bible. With that being said, here are some Bible verses that support us asking the saints to pray for us, as well as as well as telling us to pray for all those who are trying to become saints. Revelations chapter 5, verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. John chapter 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done to you. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I exhort therefore... 
that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men. All of us should intercede for one another, as well as the saints interceding for us. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults to one another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Many of us are sinners, in fact all of us, and I don't know how many of us are considered to be righteous. Only God can tell. But we know for a fact that the saints have been deemed righteous by God himself, and the prayers of a righteous man or woman availeth much. So when we ask a righteous man or woman like the saints to pray for us, their prayers availeth much because the Bible tells us so. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints... Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just a few Bible verses that, I've been able, that I was able to find that support praying for one another, as well as asking righteous people to pray for us as well. But then how do we determine what people are righteous? Then wouldn't we be judging? But then, we have, but then the church themselves has a process of determining whether someone becomes a saint. And miracles are involved. And if those miracles don't happen, that person doesn't become deemed a saint. Those miracles happen because God makes them happen. Because God wants us to know who his righteous people were. Who his saints were that were here on earth. And all those who have ever known them to be able to, to, be able to look at their lives and try to emulate them as best as we can. We have Christ to follow, to, to follow the way that we should walk through this life. We have his lessons and his teachings. But the saints are people that have proven his teachings to be true and have succeeded at, become, at, at living in heaven with him forever in eternal life. That is why looking at the saints, their lives, and asking for their prayers is a completely holy and righteous act to do because the Bible tells us so. So thanks again for watching The Upper Room. I'm Jared. I'll see you again next week. Music